Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to World Building. So in this episode, um, I don't really have too, too much planned. My main thing is that I was going to uh, talk about the gods in World Building. My wife and one of her friends are making macrons in our kitchen, so if you hear any grinding or buzzing or swearing, in fact, it's them. Just a little heads up. So, gods. There's a lot of ways to come at a god, but a lot of a lot of constructed worlds, you know, have gods or beings that are more powerful than your normal ones, or in some cases, religions that may or may not be real, just like in the real world. So, first of all, let's define a god. So, here's a small tier list I made. We're just going to describe the power level of certain gods. We're going to put humans right at the bottom, because that makes sense, right? Humans are typically meant to be the weakest, or at least the most default. So, to talk about gods... The assumption is that gods are stronger than humans. So let's put our good friend the Norse gods here in E tier. Because in a lot of instances, Norse gods are not really divine exactly. They're really just people, you know, with abilities and stuff. But certain wizards can also have those abilities. They're just a little stronger than people. Which is why I've chosen to put them here. Norse gods are almost, in some cases, just presented as a species that are slightly different from people. From humans, that is. This is uh, something that influences their depiction in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where they're really just aliens. Know what I mean? So, next, I'm going to put the Greek gods here. Small picture, but yeah, that's the Greek pantheon. Because they are definitely not just people. And then, slightly above them, I'm going to put the Titans. So if you want to put gods that are just, you know, slightly stronger, you could put them there, you know? That makes sense. And in the same vein, Tolkien's gods. Manue, Umo, etc., etc. They're definitely a lot more powerful but they're still, you know, understandable. And I'm going to put the Elder Scrolls Divines here as well. Talos would actually go here, but I just didn't save a picture of him. They're incomprehensible, but they're still definitely understandable and, you know, they make sense. I'm also going to put Mata Nui here as an example of that. So this level of power is, you know, they're above humans, but they make sense. They're not illogical above them I'm gonna put this uh Yogg-Sothoth fella here Yogg-Sothoth for those who don't know is a member of the Cthulhu mythos or mythos I can fit it better if I turn it sideways right yeah um and Lovecraft is responsible for the cosmic horror story genre where the gods are just the fucking freaks they are completely incompatible with humans they can't understand people they don't really know what the hell a human is it the difference between an elder god and a human is like a human and an ant you look at an ant and like you see them as a uh, part of a whole you see them as something that's like ah there's one of a hive you know uh, i'm gonna move the god hand down here because they're very understandable. They're a bit incomprehensible, so they're not here, but, you know, they're here. And this is where, this line here is where reality warping starts to happen. Zeus handed out a couple of curses along with some of the other Greek gods, but mostly um, it was really just things that you could have done if you had magic. This is where reality warping starts to come into it. And here I've also put the gods of Eberron. Now, the thing about the gods of Eberron is that they might not actually exist, which is a way that you can go. The thing about Eberron, for those who don't know, Eberron is one of the D&D settings. Um, you can still cast spells that are divine in origin, but it just comes from your belief. This is something that a lot of people don't like about Eberron because it means you can have atheist clerics who just believe in atheism so hard that they can cast clerical magic. 
There's also the uh, Church of My Left Sock, which is a church based around my left sock. So here, this is a sort of picture of Anu from the Elder Scrolls. And Anu is the god above these guys. He kind of created the universe. Um, I think I actually have a video talking about Anu coming out next week. But, you know, it's a little harder to understand. And here we're also going to put Eros and Thanatos, who are Greek gods. Um, but the thing is, the Greek gods here are different from these ones. Because these, ch these guys are all the children of the Titans or the other gods. The Titans are the children of these things. And these are gods of love and death. They're not really gods in the sense that the Greek gods are gods. These are more personifications of the idea of death or love. They're forces, forces of nature, truly. Whereas these are just essentially humans with control over the weather or the ocean or something. With this, I'm actually going to move these guys up a bit because they're just so inhuman and they affect reality in such a real way, you know? And here's a picture of Amaranth, um, which is the god above these guys in the Elder Scrolls. This god is the universe, more or less. Yeah, minor, minor weird thing about the Elder Scrolls lore, but this thing, Amaranth, I'm using a picture of the plant Amaranth again, but yeah, Amaranth is uh, a god that's having a dream, and that dream is the world of the Elder Scrolls. So this is just a quick little understanding of what a god is and isn't. They're always depicted as being stronger than humans, but some of them are just a little above them. You know, Thor is just like a human, but stronger, controls the storms, can wield Mjolnir, uh, immortal. And in some cases, that's just what elves do, you know? They have access to magic items that humans can't. They live longer. They have more powers, but yeah, that's just a little above humans. And then these things where they start to get a little, you know, incomprehensible. These are barely identifiable as humans, but they still have a human shape. These are just ideas, really. And then these are above them. It's difficult to judge this exactly, but I feel like this is a way for you to get a feeling for this. So where would you want to put your gods? This is a question you want to answer. So ask yourself if you even want to have gods. A very valid thing for you to do is to not have them. But the thing is, in every world building project, most people should consider putting in a religion, even if they don't have gods. This is what Ebron has done. Ebron still has a belief system. They have a religion. Whether or not these things exist is irrelevant. They have a religion. So God is kind of just a baseline for a divine being. Because even the Christian mythology has more than one divine being, even though it's monotheistic. Christians believe in their God, Yahweh, if you prefer. But they also have angels and saints. So sometimes you have things that exist within the same pantheon that are on different levels. God, depending on who you ask, the Christian God, that is, exists somewhere between D to S, you know. A lot of different views there. But angels are always portrayed as being weaker than that god. The Greek pantheon has, you know, tears all over that list that I made. And in Eberron, angels do exist, even though it's unclear whether or not gods do. And angels claim to serve the gods, but they don't know either. So it's really up to you where you want to put your cosmology. So let's start with the top god. I'm going to say that they are a kind of amorphous, sort of semi-humanoid shape that gets a little weird around the edges. Um, I'm going to say that they sit on the world like a throne. And I'm going to... Hmm. See, this is the creative progress. It's like, what do I think is cool? I think it would be cool if, like, the god is just... It's so irrelevant the only way that you can get its notice is by really pissing him off. And yeah, and then the people who used to live in the inhospitable lands or the trench did that somehow. It's unclear how, probably some weird ancient alien technology. Of course, the aliens are them. Yeah, I like the idea of 
being technologically advanced that you could challenge the gods, but not enough that you could win. And that's what the inhospitable lands were. And then the more modern people are able to use some of that technology, but not all of it. Yeah, that's a cool idea. So yeah, they exist in this world kind of dominated by this god, trying to uh, trying to repent almost. Trying to eliminate all the technology of Yeah, and then you have then you have this this arc already planned out. And then it can start going off the rails from there. You know, world building should tell stories. And here is this big like meta arc over what happened? Why did it happen? Where where is this going? Okay, that's that's cool. So yeah, let's bring if that isn't already on screen, let's bring it on screen. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So yeah, that's um that's a quick quick and dirty list of like gods and how you can make one. That's what I would do for this world and you can really just go from there. A lot of um, a lot of D and D settings, and as a result, other world buildings make the sin of like everything has to have a god. In the same way that a lot of people just try to make sure that everything has a history. Um, you don't need to write out the history of every single thing in your world. That doesn't need to be a thing, and I don't think that it should be. Sometimes having an unreliable narrator and you know, missing time is kind of cool. Uh, and you don't need everything to have a god. A lot of D&D settings are like, oh, here's the god of the elves, and they made the elves, and here's the god of the orcs, and they made the orcs, and here's the god of the humans, and here's the god of whatever. Sometimes by something not having a god, you can create something more interesting. For instance, in some worlds, humans don't have a patron god. That's why they're kind of jack of all trades. They don't have anyone divine looking out for them. Or... Sometimes orc goblins are another monstrous race as a god. That's why they're usually not player characters, because they don't have anyone divine looking out for them. Or you can go, you know, weirder with it. For instance, the lesser gods in Noelan are the god of guns, god of blood, and, uh, hmm, let's think. Ooh, robots. Why not, you know? Why don't the other things have gods? Well, I can talk about that later or never. That's up to me. That's my story to tell if I want to. Maybe in that big Gundamarung that caused the inhospitable lands to get all fucked up and caused the trench to be created, they killed the god of some of the other races in this world. Maybe the reason that the robot god still exists is because robots were built and so a new god was built for them. So... Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I might do another episode after this just to help fluff out your world a little more. But honestly, this is probably a really good place to start. This is a mini series, a little six episode Netflix show of just here's how to build a world. And you, and again, you still don't even need gods. That's up to you, bud. You can have them if you want. And you don't need to have them. So, yeah, I've been Alfred. This has been World Building. Um, I'll see you guys next week, either for the conclusion or maybe some new series or another day to update an older one. But, you know, I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming by. This has been world building.